How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is a fairly different video I guess for me. So you can't help if you're into any motorsport or whatever. I hear people talk about how good sim racing is for your skills. So I thought, you know what, I'll give it a crack. A few months ago I bought myself a Logitech wheel. I tried doing some Assetto Corsa drift and stuff and uh, frankly I was like, wow. <laughs> um, do I not know how to drive at all? Like, I mean, I know I'm not the like, fucking God's gift or anything, but I could at least turn a corner. Um, I struggle pretty hard and I pretty much put it on the back burner and stopped sort of using it for a bit. And then there was a Christmas sale. And something caught my eye. Moza R9 direct drive wheel. Um, that's sick. <laughs> I just straight up, I've been using it for a while now. That's really bloody good. Uh, it's got a quick release on it. So that she is the same wheel actually as my Supra. I just pop it off the Supra and pop it on there, which is pretty cool. Um, new fruit I got for it, obviously. Handbrake. Um, sequential uh, you can see this wooden desk is uh, not going to be long for this world uh, with that sequential on there now um, I'm just about ripping it off <laughs> so I will have to make a new uh, enclosure for the actual simulator I've got some cool parts for that too but anyway basically I got the direct drive wheel and I was like wow I can actually somewhat drive still not great but somewhat drive so that got me kind of motivated and that's where <laughs> the uh, the downward spiral began, or upward, whatever you want to say. It depends on how you look at it, half full or half empty. So today, I've just had a big uh, load of parts arrive. Here is uh, <laughs> my new PC. Uh, I will put some specs in it somewhere, but basically it's probably mid-tier, I guess. Somewhat, well, grunty enough for a setto, anyway. So I bought that, a uh, new monitor, monitor stand, keyboards, um, I've got a new seat for there, so I've got to make a new enclosure for that. I've also bought a Mark III Supra dashboard as well, so that's going to sit over the enclosure, and I want to recreate my car fully in the simulator. So that's going to be this next project. There was something else I bought. i been spending too much money lately, to be honest. Um, I, I've forgotten. Oh, <laughs> yeah, uh, a VR as well. So I got VR um, because why not? <laughs> Surely it's going to be the best way to do it. So yeah, I guess I might just um, start ripping onto some of this lot. And this is a water cooled thingy, so I've literally just walked home to see this. And I'm going to open it up and fingers crossed that it's um, still in good condition. Well, there it is, my new screen, board, and PC. Um, I have to have a rearrange here. Might put the desk over there and put that facing that way. Should be really be showing you how filthy my lounge is, but yeah, I've got a bit of a tidy up to do, and uh, I got so excited I spilled my beer, so I should probably clean the beer off the carpet before the dogs start looking at it. Now the first step I'm going to do in regards to this uh, simulator build, so I've got dashboard there, I picked up some centre console parts, um, a little bit of stuff there. I've got some more interior bits to track down, but I'm just going to make a start on that. Uh, the last thing I was waiting for was for my pedals, um, so I've ordered new ones of those. So basically I'm going to try and replicate this, but you can't see it, but it just looks dark. Um, I don't know. It's a Supra. Oh. So I want to try and get my positioning from the wheel to my handbrake and the uh, sequential. Uh, I'm going to have to make custom poles and stuff for the simulator stuff to try and get that the same distance. Um, just that whole muscle memory thing so it all stays the same. Um, but yeah, first thing I'm going to do is just start stripping out this, pulling out all the uh, bits of loom and unnecessary stuff. I've actually still got my first um, fiberglass uh, dash cluster replacement that I made from the Supra. Um, so I'll chuck that in there and I'm going to have to come up with um, a screen. Uh, whether I can somehow use the can expander or use the power tune or just do a tablet and do a tablet dash. 
Or I know you can get like the factory clusters to somewhat work. I wouldn't get speed to work, be able to get revs and like add boost and stuff like that. Um, with a bit of dicking around. Um, but I kind of want it to be like my car, so I prefer to have a digital dash if I can get away with it. Oh, that's a good start. I got the um, the surround there. Um, got the fog. Uh, oh, I want to try and be a bit of a fancy pants and run a bit of electronics through this stuff. Um, like rather than buying an external button box for the sim, I wouldn't mind trying to have like hazard lights. Um, back to pits, headlights or something like that on a toggle, um, yeah, try and incorporate anything I can into it, and um, probably like in my Supra, I'll put a, a switch panel there, and have like high-low boost, and like a boost dial, or whatever I can add, um, that might not be identical to my Supra, but it'll just be kind of cool for the sim. So yeah, the, the main concern that I've really got is how the Moser wheel is going to fit up inside here. Uh, obviously, I can I can cut all this away if I need to to allow the Moser wheel to sit there and um, poke through. Uh, or you can buy extensions, or I'm pretty sure any uh, steering wheel extension would work because it's the same bolt pattern as a standard steering wheel. Um, so that I could mount the Moser wheel further back. Um, but yeah, that's one consideration that I've got is where to mount the actual wheel itself. Um, two, what I'm gonna do for a dash, that's later down the line. But the uh, most important and the very next thing I need to decide is how much dash I'm gonna use. Uh, obviously this is going <laughs> in my house and in my lounge. So um, it's already gonna be huge. So I cannot get away with having um, a full dash and there'd be no point at the side anyway so I've got to cut it, got to cut it somewhere, uh, obviously I'll probably cut it, probably follow this line, either follow this line and go straight up there because uh, all this is unnecessary um, or try and trim down there so that it's not too close to there. Either way, I just got to try and get a nice <laughs> straight line um, trimmed up. Uh, I'll start excessive, so I might just nipper up there first, um, just to get it going, and then uh, tidy it up and get it straight down there. Undecided if I'll cut that off for the mounting of the hydro and stuff, because that's how I've got it in my car. I've, cut, I've trimmed it along there because uh, the hydro and stuff sits there it just depends on how i can package my simulator stuff compared to how i had to package things for the actual supra um, the most important thing is i'd like to keep them say the same distance from wheel to hand and things like that um, but if i can make this somewhat tidier than that then so be it you know it's this one's sort of a little showy and the dash itself is a bit rough a bit cracked um, so that'll need a somewhat of a tidy up and a paint at the bare minimum, maybe flock it or something. So I kind of committed and just sent it. Um, so we have the half dash. So uh, yeah, now it's on to making a frame. So I bought a super dashboard. I've cut that down. Um, but now I'm just making the basics of the actual frame itself. So got a bit of stainless. I'll cut that out. Um, I'll have my pedals mounted down one end, swung, and seat on rails down the other end. Um, this is the basic shape for it. Um, I'll then have an extension off the side for the pedestal for handbrake and shifter. And so I'll have to have something going up to mount the pedals and then something going up to mount the wheel. And then brackets going off that to mount the actual dash. 
and then I'll put side intrusion bar sort of thing with a bit of gusseting just to make the side look pretty and uh, yeah that is <laughs> the basic plan um, so yeah so I said I've just started with this I'll get this I'll get the um, I've got to pull the seat out of my Supra because I put a new passenger seat for my Supra so pull the old passenger seat out of it because that's on sliding rails and I'll chuck that on here I'll get that somewhere roughly where I want it then I'll mount the pedals and then I'll mount the dash sort of in relation to where I would sit in my actual Supra and I can use that to jig up to mount the actual wheelbase and everything else um, to get everything with pretty much how it is going to pretty much how it is in my real Supra and the simulated one So the other day I welded in this bar here, um, that's going to be the back bracing for the um, seat. And I've got this one cut out to be the front, I'll have to notch that and smack that in. I'm going to make some threaded bosses to put on there to mount the rails, but first things first is I uh, just got to tidy out these rails a bit. So the thorn, so I've got some four bolts here and I'm just going to weld those onto the rails and then the L brackets will be able to sit in on the rails and then I'm going to make a jig to get these squared up um, so that then I can locate those correctly on the base but the other thing I've got to take into consideration is the uh, the angle um, obviously I don't want to to upright I want to be also have the ability to adjust so I've put the seat in the middle of its adjustment so if I get it what I think is about right there then I can move it either back or forth on the reclining and then I've got sliding as well um, I'm trying to push the seat height up a little one so that I don't groan like an old man when I try to hop in if it's too low to the ground and two uh, so that I can get the correct um, seat to pedal height um, so that it's more in line with my car. Thankfully, I was like, I've got a pile of measurements in my car, which I will go get at some point. And then I've measured up my own, but um, Willie has a Supra as well, so I can um, get some measurements based off like the floor to the pedal height to the dash height for setting that all up. So that's going to make my life a little bit easier having that there that I can go measure. But for now, I'm just going to weld up these rails. That's the first one I welded up, so I'm just going to weld the rear one on the other side now too because I've taken a measurement so they're the same. And um, then I'll use the side L-plate as a jig to get the next hole, the next bolt in the right spot. And then as I said I'll jig the two together to make sure that the correct distance is sitting nice and flat. And that is um, some bar which I'll cut some bosses out of to uh, thread and weld to the chassis. I'm just finishing off welding these bosses onto the frame. Um, yes, some of you might pick up that this line here is a little on the piss because the seat rail is actually bent. I was like, and I technically have all the time in the world because it's just a side project and I should just go get some new rails. But at the same time, 
I haven't driven my sim in a while and I just want to and it's going to be hidden underneath the seat anyway no one but me and the entire internet that watches the videos so that's about 20 people will actually know um, so yeah fuck it <laughs> I've addressed it now you don't need to call me out in the comments saying that that line's on the piss because I know it is but it matches the seat so yeah anyway that's um kind of enjoying welding the thick to thin on there I'm not sure how well that's coming up as far as you can see um, definitely getting a bit more used to welding stainless still not great um, but yeah it is slightly different obviously to what I'm used to so yeah I'll carry on welding these last of these bosses and, um, and I'll chuck the seat back on and it'll be time to mock up next down there. the pedals still undecided if I'm gonna go floor or swung mount for those um, I might even set it up so that it can run both so I can just try and decide what I want later on